Hey everybody, Andrew here. I am in my hotel in Boca Raton, Florida, where I've been for the past week rehearsing for a production of Giselle with Boca Ballet Theater. I'm a dancer and a choreographer. Happy to be here dancing. A couple weeks ago, I did my first Thrift With Me video, showing you all of my favorite thrift spots where I live in Noonan, Georgia. These are spots that I go to all the time that I know very well. And I thought while I'm here in Florida, it would be fun to hit up a couple thrift spots here. I have never thrifted here before. I've been here to Boca several times, but I've never really had a vehicle to be able to get around in. And so I thought it would be fun to do like a thrift with me first impression style where I go to a couple different thrift stores here and sort of check out what the Boca thrifting scene is like. So I'm going to take you with me today. Hopefully we'll find some good stuff. I'm not really looking to buy that much today. I have to get everything in a 40 pound check bag on the way back. So I have pretty limited space there, but you know, we like to look no matter what, and maybe I'll find something cool. You never know. Outfit of the day, I have these Marnie for H&M shorts that I got when that collection came out years ago. And this Dolce & Gabbana sweater shirt thing that I thrifted at Housing Works in New York City. All right, so this is our vehicle today. I have been sort of the designated driver of the trip, driving everybody to the theater and to the grocery store and such, which has been fine for the most part, except that parking this thing is like the bane of my existence, which has been kind of scary, but mostly just humiliating, having to repark multiple times with a car full of like really amazing dancers. But I have the keys, which means I can go on a little field trip today. So not too bad. First stop today is the Boca Raton Habitat for Humanity Restore. Let's go. Okay, we made it to the heart of downtown Boca Raton. We're here at the ReStore. I am very aware that I probably will not be able to buy anything here. It may or may not break my heart depending on what I find, but I just have to check out a ReStore every time that I can. So let's go on it. The first thing that hit me when I walked in was the general grand, over-the-top, antique style pieces. Whether or not these are genuine antiques is questionable, but the styles and the price tag suggested that this was the vibe for this part of Boca. This mid-century china cabinet was definitely the real deal and is a beautiful find. I love the curved shapes at the top and bottom of each glass panel. There was a sign that said most items were 40% off, so I think that makes this one a steal. Lighting was another strong category for this store. I was struck by the drama, elegance, and kookiness of some of the fixtures. They also make sense in the context of the over-the-top, designy feeling that a lot of the stuff in the store has. It isn't really trendy or comfortable, just kind of flashy. But I kind of love that for some of the pieces if you mix them in with some more humble, quiet pieces. I thought the shape of this lampshade to work with the shape of the lamp was super interesting. And this driftwood type sculpture was pretty cool too. I definitely want to find some vertical wood sculptural pieces like this. Such a great way to add a warm, natural bit of interest to a boring corner. So much art at this store as well. It was kind of overwhelming to be honest. Definitely a few interesting pieces in the mix. I definitely can't fit any of these in my suitcase though, so I won't spend too long digging through these today. Unlike the restores near me in Georgia, this one had clothes. Not missing much here, although this jacket was kind of funny in an ironic way. Some strong dressers and end tables that could be great with a little love. But probably my favorite pieces in the store were the display pieces that weren't for sale. Of course, love this solid geometric shelving unit. And this weird expandable makeshift table thing. Anybody know what this is or what it used to be? Such a cool industrial moment. All right, so final impressions. There were definitely more good finds here than I expected. I guess when I have thrifted in other parts of Florida before, it tends to feel very like 
resort oriented. Like it feels like everything has come out of like a beach themed hotel. Um, but there were some actually really great pieces in there. Whether or not they would have been right for me price wise is questionable, but I did see a sign in there that a lot of the pieces were 40% off, so that definitely helps. Again, if I were able to take things with me, I would have spent a lot more time in the art section. The frames alone would be really good. Um, but again, with pricing on those, not sure that it's really at the right price point for what I'm looking for. But you know I had fun checking things out. Next up is the Goodwill Boca Boutique Store. Definitely going to be a bit more clothing focused this time, so maybe I'll find something. You never know. <laughs> First impression, yikes. I think this is more what I was expecting from the last store. Catering a big party, got it. Staying comfortable at home, done. Giving the impression of the real deal without being the real deal, absolutely. I can't say I'm loving anything so far, but let's keep digging. If I needed a wetsuit, this one would have been perfect. I think it's reversible. And this velvet blazer is awesome. Just way too big for me. Darn. The real MVP of this store was the belts and accessories rack giving you everything you need for a vintage, classic, dandy look. I think I have some stuff like this in my collection that I can dig out if I'm feeling that vibe, so I'm gonna pass on these today. So that was really interesting. Um, when I first walked in, I was like, Ugh, this is gonna be rough when half of the store is like dedicated to glassware and like china it seemed like it was going to be a bit bleak and first pass around the store definitely a bit bleak but sometimes you really got to dig i would say that this is a great store to go into if you're going for that kind of like old man dandy kind of style i mean i think boca does have an older demographic so that makes sense so if you're going for the authentic like granddad type look Definitely some good options in there. Um, and not gonna lie, I kind of dig that aesthetic and it's something that I'm wanting to embrace more, that kind of like vintage-y thing. But yeah, nothing that really stood out to me too much today. But as I head into the next Goodwill, I definitely have that in mind in terms of things that I'm looking for, that kind of like preppier, kind of more formal style, like smoking jacket, cravat kind of vibes. So I'm definitely gonna sort of have an eye out for that in the next store as I go in. Last stop is the Goodwill in Del Rey. I'm expecting that it might be a little bit different in there because it's maybe a bit more touristy. I've only been up to that area going to the beach, and so it might be a little bit younger, a little bit trendier, or a little bit more beachy in general. But I don't know. Let's go find out. Not really much to say about this store, to be honest. It was big and basic. Not much personality or individuality to their collection today. Have any of y'all been to this store before? Do they usually have more interesting pieces? I know thrifting can be hit or miss. When in Florida, linen is a no-brainer. but this fit didn't work for me. The only piece I saw real potential in was this leather garment bag. It was falling apart at the top, which makes it a perfect candidate to be taken apart and turned into something else. But no way I can get this home, so let's head out. So I was pretty pumped when I walked up because the store is so huge, but Quantity over quality this time. They just really didn't have that much that was interesting. They did have a lot, but it was all kind of generic and basic, nothing very special. So kind of a bust there. Um, I did pass by a restore that is like 
just in that direction. Um, wasn't planning to make a stop here. I think I looked and saw that they were closed today, but it says they're open seven days a week. So maybe let's go check that out. I unknowingly saved the best for last. Isn't it funny how the only unplanned stop turns out to be a total winner? Gotta stay spontaneous and flexible, I guess. Not only did the store have some great finds, but it also just had a nice energy. Right away, I came across this incredible leather jacket. Wow. You know I'm a sucker for leather, biker, armor type looks, and this was all of the above. I wasn't sure about the fit and I didn't see a price on it, but I thought I should hold on to it just in case. The clothes in general at this store were impressive, particularly this vintage 70s leather trench and this vintage Oscar de la Renta suit. I definitely would have at least tried this one on if it had been close to my size. The fabric was so luxe. Some decent lamps. And nice furniture pieces. This nice stand is a cheaper wood composite type feel, but I love the shape and the hardware, especially for the price. If I had seen this at home, I probably would have bought it and flipped it. Maybe a solid black paint job, or covering it in fabric somehow, maybe faux leather. This round metal shelf had potential. And I also recommend these kinds of filing cabinets with the olive color and gold details for practical storage and a little subtle desaturated color. I have a more vintage version of these at home, but these are a solid find. The art game was really strong at this store too. A little weird, maybe, but weird can be good. Definitely some really elegant pieces too. With my jacket in hand, I decoded the price structure. The starting price point for jackets was $6, and this one had a green X, so we had $40, and most everything was 40% off, so that makes it just under $30. Guess I got my math in for the day. Okay, so that was by far the best store. They had so much good stuff, good clothes, furniture, home decor, prices were really reasonable. 10 out of 10, definitely would come back here again. I did end up purchasing the jacket. There was this woman in there that was like, I was gonna buy that, it was on the floor. And then this other woman was like, it's already mine. So like people were fighting over it. So I guess I got lucky. Um, it was priced at $46, but then I think everything had a 40% discount. So it came down to just under 30 bucks which is pretty awesome. It is a 40 regular, which is my size, so I'm surprised it was so tight. If I feel like it can fit me, I will probably not have the heart to take it apart because, you know, it's just a work of art in my eyes. But if it does not fit me, I may or may not take it apart to use as a part of the chair that I'm working on. I mentioned that to the woman in the store and she was like freaking out about it. Maybe y'all will too. Let me know. Is that a huge mistake? I don't know. It makes me sad, but also it's exactly what I've been needing. The way the zippers come apart is just perfect. So I just think it might have a better role in my life if I use it that way, but maybe y'all will hate me forever. I don't know. Thanks so much for coming along with me today. This was really fun. It's interesting to get like a taste of another city or another area. It's like when people talk about learning a lot about other people by going through their trash. It's a little bit the same going to a thrift store. You can kind of get a sense of like what has been important in people's lives and what has been discarded and just get like a little piece of like what life is like here. I find that so fascinating. Not to mention there were some really interesting finds. I hope you guys enjoy this. If you want to see more like this, hit the like button. Also, you can subscribe. I'm hoping to be doing more of these thrift with me type videos in various places so maybe more to come soon thanks for watching see you soon so i'm back at the hotel and i thought i would try the jacket on with something a little bit less bulky underneath and even though you know i'm not sure that i'll wear it with all the padding and all of that like i feel like a superhero and it is kind of awesome and so i don't think i can bear to take this jacket apart let me know what y'all think. Am I actually gonna wear this? Like, should I actually wear this? Or should I prioritize the needs of my project? At the very least, it makes me think that what I need to do for the chair is just source another jacket. 
Hopefully when that's damaged, I might start a little bit of an online search on Poshmark and eBay and see what I can find. I would feel a lot less guilty taking apart something that's a bit more damaged, but this one is in good condition and it fits me. The other one that I already took apart did not fit me, so it had no meaning in my life, even though it might have been really wonderful for someone else, which perhaps is really selfish, I don't know. But if the jacket fits, can you deconstruct it? I don't know, y'all. Update, the shoulder pads are removable. It's a done deal, I can't take it apart. Chair's gotta find something else. This jacket is awesome.